with this um, point, I'm going to be turning over to Marissa to begin the didactic portion of our echo. Thanks, Marissa. Um, thank you, Marnie. All right, so I'm going to, we practice this, share my screen. I have a little PowerPoint presentation. I will present and someone can give me a thumbs up. I can see Margie. Okay, she can see it. Great. Awesome. So thank you so much for joining. Um, I've got about 20 minutes to talk about a somewhat complex but and developing um, program that we have in community partnership with many people that are on this call. So um, if anyone throughout the presentation would like to chime in, I, I'm super happy to have make this an actual collaboration presentation too. So um, if, if I forgot anything, let me know. But the title of the presentation, so we're going to talk about care coordination and construction. So creating community partnerships, helping seniors age in place. Um, so this is me. Uh, I am the neighborhood network manager. I was hired as a part-time community organizer in May of 2015. And in, uh, let's see, July of 2017, Neighborhood Network merged with Habitat for Humanity of Summit County. So with that, we added on a lot of opportunities for programming and a lot of capacity in what we could do as a neighborhood network organization. Before that, we were fiscally sponsored by United Way, and I was the only staff person. So now we've got a bunch more people, including Priest, um, which we're super excited, and I'll mention his new title here in a moment. Um, my education before, I did not want to be a community organizer. Or I did not even know that was an opportunity. I wanted to be a high school math teacher um, and, and or work at a college. So uh, that, was, that was my goals, but I'm using all of those. So logic, organization, um, and really community organizing through that higher ed program. So that's just a little bit about me, but a little bit about um, neighborhood network and some of the words that I'll be using. So I'm really um, interested in making sure that we can use some common words throughout this presentation. So neighborhood revitalization, you're going to hear me talk about a lot. Uh, neighborhood Network is a neighborhood revitalization program of Habitat for Humanity of Summit County. So similar to our new home construction or our deconstruction or even our restore, if you've come out and bought, you know, like a really great discounted, um, you know, bedroom set from our restore on Romig Road, little shout out. Um, <laughs> That is neighborhood revitalization is a program similar to those. And really with neighborhood revitalization, it's a holistic community development effort. And we want to collaborate with any as many community partners as we possibly can that have you know some, some stake in solving systemic problems. So neighborhood revitalization, again, to recap, is looking at the whole picture and making sure that we are working towards the ultimate goal which is improving the quality of life for all residents in, an, in the entire community. So it's that big picture. It's the, you know, we're not just building homes. We're not just building um, or doing critical home repairs. We're really trying to build community and hope along with homes and along with um, rehabbing houses as well. Any questions on that? All right. So that's just some background, some words so that you can use around town now, you know what neighborhood revitalization is. Um, neighborhood revitalization, we've been lucky. Uh, we are relatively new. So if you kind of, if you know Habitat, if you've heard of Habitat for Humanity, you likely immediately go to like probably pictures of Jimmy Carter raising the, you know, the, the sides of a house up on a build site and, you know, a lot of incredible work that happens in the new home and affordability um, new home construction and affordable, affordable housing um, construction. So neighborhood revitalization, like I said, we really look to um, ensure that we're looking at the entire community. So the neighborhood revitalization quality of life framework was developed around the time that neighborhood revitalization came out through Habitat International. And it was also about the time that Neighborhood Network merged with Habitat of Summit County. So I was lucky enough to actually put words to what I was trying to do for two years prior. Um, 
after trying to just be a high school math teacher. So um, Neighborhood Network really lives in this centerpiece, that green portion. So we really connect with residents. We try to build sense of community, social cohesion, collective action, really working with residents, community stakeholders, any sort of organization that has um, you know, an interest in improving the quality of life for a certain uh, neighborhood in Akron or all of Akron, all of Summit County, we wanna work with them. But we also realize that we're not the experts in everything. So all of these blue sector outcomes is kind of what they're labeled on this quality of life framework are so, so important. But we know that we have to stay in our lane, which is really housing, um, habitats, sector that we can have the most impact in is housing. But as many people on this call, um, you know, expressed their background is in health. So how do we partner health and housing together um, along with, you know, ensuring that not only does uh, a neighbor have access to affordable housing, but also access to affordable health care, um, preventative health care, et cetera. And how do we do that in a holistic way that they can ensure that they can also get to their appointments. So transportation's down in the bottom right corner. Amenities, how do we make sure that, you know, if they can travel, if they can go on the Metro bus, um, can they actually make it to a grocery store within an hour? Um, so really looking at that holistic, again, neighborhood revitalization is a holistic approach to improve the quality of life for everyone in the community. So neighborhood network is a, again, a Habitat for Humanity of Summit County program. We merged in 2017. Our mission, even prior to coming to um, Habitat Summit County was to build a unified voice to renew our community. And a little shout out, um, Sue Hazlett, who's on this call and is a web um, administrator is uh, actually on our neighborhood network core team. So she's on the advisory board and really was, I mean, probably the linchpin like that connected or, you know, the connector, the glue that got us all connected to even be able to do this project. So I'm super grateful for Sue's, um, you know, participation in all of this. So we focus on the Middlebury and University Park neighborhoods in Akron, Ohio. And all this to say, believe me, I promise you, I'm going to talk about construction and case management here in a second, but you need the foundation. It's just like a good house. So, um, what we do is we build the unified voice to renew our community. We do it in the neighborhood revitalization um, you know, mentality. We were focused on improving the quality of life for all, but we focus on two neighborhoods in Akron, Ohio, Middlebury and University Park. So they're really actually just east of downtown. And we do this by, we gauge, like I said, any stakeholder resident that is interested in participating in improving the quality of life by building relationships and community and hope, identifying, strengthening, and connecting our assets, cultivating leaders, and advocating for action if we cannot empower um, the residents to, you know, actually advocate for themselves. So if we need to step in, we totally will. Uh, going back to the we do this by, uh, I wanted to just highlight the connection between what Neighborhood Network's mission and vision is and why the heck are we even involved in GWEP? <laughs> so um, the connection was made by Sue, again, um, all credit goes to her, to connect Neighborhood Network to the wonderful work that was happening in, in GWEP. I, at the time, had no idea, well, first off, there's so many acronyms with GWEP, but no idea what GWEP stood for, no idea, you know, all of the, the amazing work that was happening by all of these healthcare professionals and, I also did not know how we could possibly fit in, but um, Neighborhood Network has signed on to the GWEP grant to assist with the uh, fifth goal, which is uh, ADRD, um, Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. So we are acting as, again, the glue, the community connector so that we can assist uh, folks that are putting on the dementia friends training, that we can assist like connecting these type of resources and thinking that more creatively. Uh, so really that connecting the dots organization is what we've been tapped as. So that has led to our Housing Plus Aging in Place um, Habitat for Humanity International Initiative. So the same time GWEP is going on and all this really great work and interesting things are happening with our community partners, 
I'm learning on the side, hey, there's this Habitat um, International initiative that's called Aging in Place. Well, it's officially Housing Plus Aging in Place. And how could we connect with that now that we are connected to our community partners through the WEP program? So just a little background, um, why Habitat for Humanity International has really launched this Housing Plus Aging in Place initiative is because every day, <laughs> um, 10,000 Americans are turning 65 um, years old. And unfortunately, of those, you know, many older adults, there's about 19 million that are living in disrepair and inadequate shelter. So Habitat for Humanity, our main mission is, uh, our main vision is that everyone deserves a decent place to live. And so this is obviously a gap that we could potentially help. Going back to that little blue sector, housing is our lane. We can help with that, but we need our community partners to be able to um, assist with the holistic portion to make sure that we're addressing the entire homeowner's needs. So you can learn more about what, um, you know, Habitat International, is talking about when they're talking about housing plus aging in place, I included the, the little link to where I got all of this information from. You can read a little, a couple um, nice stories on that hyperlink that says positive impact. But really the main, the main thing is Habitat International is interested in improving older adults' homes and their quality of life so they can flourish and continue to live where they currently live or in other terms, age in place. So what's the housing plus difference? So Neighborhood Network, uh, or excuse me, Habitat for Humanity of Summit County has a critical home repair program. Our site supervisors go out after a homeowner applies through our program. If they qualify, they go out and they do critical home repairs on the exterior of their home, which can include gutters, shutters, roofs, windows, foundation work, really anything that would allow that person to continue to live in their home. But the housing plus difference is that we've been challenged by Habitat International to include and make the aging in place, any sort of aging in place critical home repair, an actual person-centered approach. And in doing that, we need to um, include two assessments. So the first one we always do, um, our site supervisor will go out and do our home repair evaluation. That's done by our construction specialist. Um, his name is John. And you know, that's just to scope out what the homeowner needs, what they think they need, what they actually need, what, what they would like. Um, and then the housing plus difference is that we're adding a functional survey and that's to be completed by a local human services professional. So we're working with um, a physical therapist right now, Craig Sisak, through the pilot program that I'm gonna talk about in one minute. Uh, you know, all of this, and as healthcare professionals, those of you on the line, you'll understand activities of daily living, um, understanding like where their like cognitive abilities are, their fear of falling. All of this was brand new to me, but absolutely makes total sense that, you know, if we're going to go in and modify the interior of someone's home, uh, we want to make sure that we're including all variables, all aspects to make sure it's the best possible modification for that individual person. So it has to be an individualized, holistic, person-centered approach. All right, so what's the web difference? So aging in place, we've got the, um, you know, house, uh, housing plus aging in place, Habitat International model. Um, they've kind of put it on us, you know, make sure that you're doing the scope the construction scope and the holistic assessment. But GWEP has really like upped our game, I think, and really has set us apart um, in Summit County to be able to offer even more support for the homeowners and even more wraparound services um, just through the partnerships that we've been able to, and the relationships that we've been able to build through the GWEP program. So I've been lucky enough to, you know, connect with SUMA health professionals um, you know, geriatricians, pharmacists, um, shout out to uh, Dr. Dros and Sue Foss Knight, and Neomed, obviously, for supporting the GWEP grant, uh, Direction Home, Akron Can Area Agency on Aging and Disability. Sorry, I forgot the last two words. Um, I will change it in the PowerPoint. Um, Summit County Public Health, Ohio C Council for Cognitive Health, Benjamin Rose Institute on Aging, 
Alzheimer's Association, contracted physical and occupational therapists, and many, many more. So the relationships, which is neighborhood networks, bread and butter, like that's what we focus on. If you remember back to the slide that is like, what do we do? We build our assets, we connect them. We, um, you know, really try to work together as much as we possibly can. So that's the GWEP difference. And we've been able to add on um, assist additional wraparound services that, you know, really have benefited folks in the SUMA Health Aging in Place pilot program. So these are my last couple slides. It's only like four, but I wanted to review how we took the theory, the idea, and applied it in Summit County together. So I'm just going to do a quick overview, probably talk a little lessons learned and talk about the um, impact to date. So SUMA Health, the pilot program, we applied for our grant and we call it the SUMA Health pilot program because SUMA Health funded it um, through their uh, sponsorship program uh, through community benefits. So SUMA Health pilot pro aging in place pilot program, we applied in November 2020. We had our first community meeting, you know, gathering all the great minds together, get to planning, understand what was needed in the grant or because of the grant and what we really wanted to do. Like, let's dream big. Um, the, the pilot does run until December 2021, and I'll let you know where we're at um, in three slides. The event location, we did choose to implement the pilot program in Middlebury. So that's one of Neighborhood Network's target neighborhoods and the city of Barberton. So those of you that are local um, to Summit County know that SUMA Health has two large um, physical locations in Middlebury, like right east of Route 8 and in Barberton. So because it was SUMA Health pilot program, we tried to, you know, make some impact around their physical locations. Uh, the sponsorship, we asked for $15,000, and that was for up to $2,500 for critical home repair and interior home modification assistance to six homeowners. So we kept it small and we said, let's get six homeowners through this pilot program. Let's learn some lessons and let's roll. So the SUMA Health pilot program, this is probably the most important um, uh, slide on here because this shows you the inner workings. These are, this is the bones of how the pilot program has worked to date. We're still working things out. Um, but our first goal, our, the very first thing is we need to identify consumers. We chose to do that through our partners at Direction Home, Akron Pan Area Agency on Aging and Disability. So through their care coordination program, they have identified, um, even working with some of like our pretty hard parameters that we set up geographic wise, and everyone has to be a homeowner. That is the very important piece here. Um, so once we identify the consumers or the homeowner, um, they have to go through Habitat for Humanity's critical home repair application process. So we'll, Habitat will work with them. This will be, um, again, a priest job. A uh, priest will be working with those homeowners or those consumers to qualify through our um, homeowner home repair application. Then after, um, if a homeowner is approved, they move on to the court. Uh, our community partners, really it's Michelle Guerreri who's on this call too. Um, she helps coordinate the in-home assessments um, along with John, our site supervisor. So remember there's two part assessments. There's the construction scope and the um, holistic assessment that's done by like a social worker or a PT or OT. So coordinating that in-home assessment, though they actually have been going out together to do that, which has been really great and, you know, doesn't strap the homeowner or the consumer with too many meetings and intrusions. And then this is where uh, Michelle comes in, and I know that we're doing a presentation, so I don't want to steal your thunder, but you're going to get a view, an inside view of the CMIT meetings. So then we'll go ahead and schedule the CMIT. So this is really the added bonus. Um, that is different from what I understand than any sort of habitat aging in place program is the addition of the CMIT, really that care management, the wraparound services, all the brains at the table, being able to say, well, like, well, maybe actually this prescription is da da da, or like, do we really need a comfort seat toilet if their furnace is not working? Like, let's prioritize. So it's that brain trust 
um, that is such an added bonus for this pilot program. So we do the pre cement forms, which I think you're gonna get a sneak preview of. Um, we actually have the uh, care management interprofessional team post cement, uh, which you know is then getting those recommendations out to um, not only Habitat to actually do the construction work, but also to the PCP, we're still figuring this part out. And then luckily we have the wonderful Michelle, Michelle Guerreri to um, help us with those post evaluations and outcomes. Cause we wanna prove that this is working. We want to prove that this is a good thing. And we also wanna learn from it too. You know, not everything can be rosy and sunshine. Uh, if, if there's any problems or stumbling blocks, we want to know. So that evaluation and outcome piece is super important. Um, this is just some uh, examples of the types of interior home modifications, accessibility modifications that Habitat for Humanity of Summit County can make. So ramps, grab bars, tub cuts, lever style, doorknobs, technology. We actually received a grant for Alexas and we'll be giving those out. So maybe like if they need assist, if the homeowner or the consumer needs assistance with um, remembering to take their medication, let's get them set up with an Alexa or, you know, whatever would work for them in that situation. Smoke CO2 detectors, gates, handrails, interior and exterior lighting, non-slip flooring, even just identifying that, hey, maybe having this like carpet on top of a carpet isn't the best idea. Um, and so making those small adjustments, it's not a construction piece, it's just a suggestion. ADA compliant toilets, and then plus any of the existing exterior or interior critical home repairs that we offer through um, our regular programming. So this is almost the end of my presentation. Uh, we view this, obviously, the SUMA Health Pilot Program and the future of aging in place with Habitat for Humanity with our community partners as a continuation of the ongoing efforts for the city of Akron to be named an age-friendly city. So Mayor Horgan has you know, expressed his desire to create a holistic approach. So all of these words are still coming back <coughs> together, a holistic approach to improve the quality of life for all residents. Um, if you are interested in what the home repair application looks like, the link will be provided in the PowerPoint. Do you have any questions? So this is sort of like a, um, exciting moment for me <laughs> because I was able, I was super grateful to be able to kick off the Aging in Place pilot program, but um, something wonderful that happened out of this, honestly, a lot, again, a lot of credit goes to the GWEP program, the GWEP grant and the support and the collaborations that have happened with many people on this call. Um, Habitat has increased our capacity to hire someone through a capacity build grant that we received through HUD. Um, through Habitat International. So it's a capacity bill. It's a three-year grant, step down, um, you know, supporting the salary of Priest Good, who is on this call. I don't know if anyone can see him, but I'm sure when we, you know, go and everyone can see everyone, maybe he can introduce himself or he already did, but he's one and a half weeks um, in and he's going to do incredible. So many of you will be getting an email from me introducing you to Priest, particularly because I'm going on maternity leave. So I want to make sure everyone has a direct line to Habitat if you want to learn more or if you want to get connected and want to participate, if you have any questions. So let's all, if, if you're interested, if you have questions, please email to Rochelle and she will like divvy them up um, as, as according. So don't want to, here's the impact to date. Uh, we have completed two homeowners uh, construction, so which means that they've done bo both homeowners um, home assessments. These are the totals of the grant money that we've been using. I do know that homeowner two, actually her whole construction cost approximately, I think it was $7,000. So her impact was greater than that because through this pilot program, we've been able to layer grant funding and allow folks to really um, like take advantage of the, the resources that Habitat and our community partners have. Homeowner three has qualified and we're just awaiting scheduling for their assessment. And then homeowner two, it, it's like an unfortunate situation, but I wanted to highlight it as a, um, a lesson learned. 
So unfortunately, the homeowner has delinquent tax, um, a delinquent tax contract, which would disqualify for them from our application process. Um, but through the web partnership uh, and just being connected with Benjamin Rose Institute on Aging, uh, they have a wonderful uh, program called ESOP that they do a tax loan program. And so we reached out to our community partner, we connected with them and said, hey, what do we, what do we think? Now we can't make the homeowner do this. We can't make them sign up for a loan, but at least it's an option that can get them through the application process. And then homeowner five and six, we um, have sent them the application. We just, they just need to send it back. So if there's any questions or if Sue and crew want to just jump in and do theirs and I can answer after whatever you want. Only question I saw was about the zip codes. Could, oh. Mary Ann was wondering if you could identify zip codes that are eligible. Yeah, so the zip codes for the pilot program were Barberton's, which is 44311, 44311. 44203. 44203. <laughs> I'm just saying, when I, when I heard about this program, I didn't know what Middlebury meant. Sure, yeah. So when I need to identify, it was zip code. So I didn't know if that was something other people, like, I, it really, I didn't know what Middlebury, didn't yeah. know what. So Middlebury, thank you, Marianne. And Marianne has been just a trooper. We have thrown all of the things at her and we've been learning together. So thank you, Marianne, truly. Um, so Marianne knew the Barberton zip code. Uh, what was that again, Marianne? Do you want to say it? 44203. 44203. And Middlebury's, I do know this one since it's our, um, there's actually a, a hodgepodge of zip codes. So we did 44. Um, 305, 44.306 maybe, and then 44.311 was sort of like our university park. Marianne, what you, what you got? I've got 44.304, 44.305, and 06. If 11's an option, I'm saying bring it on. That's You're like, let's go. <laughs> I didn't know it was an option. I've got more to send you. If I <laughs> so, and that's a great, like, I guess, end to the um, conversation for me is we are growing our capacity with priests um, adding on with more future grant funding that we're hopeful to um, have, you know, come in to support this program and grow it and keep on learning the lessons. We do, our ultimate goal is to be able to serve as Habitat of Summit County, all of Habitat all of Summit County. So really looking to that care coordination pool and not restricting it based on zip codes or, um, you know, neighborhoods that had just have kind of like ambiguous lines. So um, we're really excited for that piece too. So Marianne, they're coming. <laughs> okay. And um, you have five and six on your previous slide that you're waiting for them to return their application. Yep. If you could just privately 